friends, welcome back to Well That's Good Wednesday. Hope y'all are having a great week and I'm so excited for the advice we're gonna get today. Before we get into our incredible guests, the LO Sister Conference is a month away. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but that means for all of you who are listening, you need to get your ticket today ellosisterconference.com tell all your friends come join us and I'm not just saying that because I like selfishly want you there even though I do and I want to meet y'all and I want to hang with y'all but more than that I just know God has something so special for our time there the speakers that are coming have words to bring the worship coming has already been rehearsing and in prayer for those worship sets and what those are going to be y'all it's just going to be such a rich time and so much fruit is going to be brought from the time that we spend together in God's word worshiping him and hanging out together. It's going to be awesome. Don't want you to miss it. It's in Monroe, Louisiana right here where I'm from. Would love to host you in my hometown. So go to ellosisterconference.com. Get your ticket today. Don't forget to tell your friends and y'all take a road trip down here. It's going to be a great time. If you need a plane ticket and you can't get one because plane tickets are selling out very fast, you could also fly into Shreveport. You could fly into Alexandria. You could fly into Jackson, Mississippi, or Dallas. Those are semi-close airports around, but if not, get in the car and drive. Join us here. It's going to be a great time. All right, now we got to get to our guest of the day. This woman doesn't really need an introduction. She is a passionate, on-fire preacher for the gospel. She does ministry alongside her husband, John. She has four boys, an incredible family. This is Lisa Bevere I'm talking about, and she also has a new devotional book out that is called Fiercely Loved, and the subtitle I love, it's like God's Wild wild thoughts about you. We're going to talk about how much God fiercely loves you. And if you don't feel loved by God today, I just hope that you stick around and listen to this incredible word and encouragement from Lisa Bevere. Without further ado, let's welcome our guest to the Well Let's Go podcast. Yeah, well, I am so excited to be part of this podcast. And, you know, I have been married for 40 years and in ministry for almost awesome. that long. So there you incredible. go. That works in my favor. Hey, well, that's something we can all learn from. Most of the listeners that I have are girls who are maybe in college or young moms, and so most maybe just got married, um, are single in that season. A lot of people are either doing ministry or just love the Lord, and so uh, you're speaking to a lot of people who can learn from you um, as a spiritual mother from afar, and so I'm so grateful that you're on this podcast. Um, I have listened to so many of your sermons and all the things, but I'm just grateful to dive into today. But before we get into our conversation, I have to ask you the question I ask every single person who comes on this podcast, and that is, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? Boom. Big question right off the bat. It was a mom piece of advice. And they Love told it. me to relax because your baby <laughs> has no idea you don't know what you're doing. Now that's good. <laughs> now that is good. And I need that right now with my one-year-old. <laughs> That's yeah. a great piece of advice. Just take a deep breath. She has no idea. <laughs> that is a great piece of advice because sometimes I'm like, oh boy, like this morning, actually, I put a diaper on her last night that was too small, but I was like, oh, it's okay. I didn't want to fiddle with taking her pajamas back off and getting the new size. And then we woke up to pee all over the bed this morning. So there's that, but she won't remember. <laughs> I, I might for the next day as I need to redo my sheets, but she won't remember. But that's yeah. a, that's great advice. Um, man, I, I'm so excited to dive into even talking about your devotional book. But before we get there, I want you to tell us a little bit about you and, and your story. I mean, I know, like you just mentioned, so briefly and powerfully, you've been married for 40 years and done ministry for about that long. So tell us a little bit about your life and how you got to do and what, what you're doing. Yeah, so I have a crazy background. My family was just so broken. My parents were divorced, remarried, divorced again. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was married four times. So wow. I came from this wild, broken background. And I found myself out at college at the University of Arizona, because I picked it because it was a party school. I found mm -hmm. myself thinking there has to be something more to life. Yeah, Everything I thought would bring me some kind of fulfillment has just proven to be empty. And wow. I personally have become someone I don't even like. I mm -hmm. had been alone with myself in a car driving from Tucson, Arizona to West Lafayette, Indiana, which was my hometown at the time. And I thought, I, I can't stand myself. 
I've become shallow. I've become cruel. I've compromised every moral I've ever held for myself. And I remember, okay, you probably won't even know this song, but I was singing ACDC, I'm on the highway to hell. And I thought pretty much that is true. That is true. And it scared me. I was like, wait, wait, I am on the highway to hell. And I had never heard about the love of God. I had, I had felt a list of rules but I had never heard about a God who actually wanted to have a relationship with me. And so I came home, my dad's an alcoholic, my mom's all upset. There's all this fighting. So I move into the dorm uh, for, you know, this summer school. And I meet this guy that is leading this all campus Bible study. (laughs) And he invites me to a Bible study picnic. And what I heard Sadie was free food. That's what I heard. I heard (laughs) free food. So I go to this picnic and at the picnic, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but the Christian sisters were not very nice to me. They're like, we're praying for you. And I thought, wait, wait, these are angry <laughs> prayers. I don't know if I want oh these kind gosh. of people praying for me. There was just a shortage, shortage of Christian single guys that were eligible. And yeah. so they were a little angry that this heathen girl was there. But <laughs> at that picnic, for the very first time, I heard that God loved me in spite of me. Wow. And it was wow. so, such a revelation. And it, it was this gentleman that had invited me is now my husband of 40 years this October. He told wow. me, this is what he said to me. He said, I want you to know, I haven't dated anybody in two and a half years, but God mm-hmm. told me to invite you to this picnic so that you could hear that he loves you. Y'all, this summer has been so busy and flying between traveling, speaking events, and getting ready for the LS Sister Conference and keeping up with my homegirl, Honey, walking all around the house. A good night's sleep is very important to Christian and I, and that is why we love Helix Sleep. So whenever we got married, we knew we wanted a mattress that was just right for both of us, but it's kind of hard because we have different preferences. But Helix Sleep has a quiz. It just takes two minutes to complete and matches you to the right mattress based on your sleep preferences. When I took the Helix Sleep quiz, I got matched with the Helix Midnight Mattress because because I wanted something that was not too firm and not too soft. And I'm also a side sleeper and Christian is as well. And this is a mattress that gives us all the support and comfort that we need for a good night's sleep. Even Cabo and Honey like it as well, which is important. Not only do they like it, but so do so many others. Helix Sleep has over 12,000 five-star reviews. So it's definitely a fan favorite. If you're on the hunt for a new mattress, don't wait another minute. Just take the Helix Sleep mattress quiz and you'll have a mattress shipped to your door for free. No awkward mattress store shopping is needed hallelujah in fact you don't even have to take my word for it helix sleep was awarded number one best overall mattress of 2020 by various magazines and it has even been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improved sleep all you have to do is go to helixsleep.com sadie take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with the best customized option so get ready for the best night's sleep of your life friends they even have a trial period for a hundred nights risk-free this is the best part so if for any reason you don't love it they'll actually come to you and pick it up for you so it's completely risk-free but i truly think you're not gonna have a problem i think you're gonna love it helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sadie that's helixsleep.com slash sadie for up to 200 dollars off and two free pillows and i was just overwhelmed I spent uh, about an hour and a half that night looking for the book of Paul because John had quoted Paul so many times and I thought there must be a book of Paul. (laughs) I had a way Bible in my college dorm. I'm like, open to the book of Paul and trying to find the book of Paul. And I finally go to Corinthians where it says, if any man or woman be in Christ, they're a new Mm. creation. The old has passed away and behold, all things have become new. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I found the one book of Paul. So I was just incredibly (laughs) all in, felt like my purpose of my life had been realized. I realized why everything else was empty, got water baptized, went back to the University of Arizona, drove on my sorority sisters crazy, and and then (laughs) anyway, got got married, and uh, John was a youth pastor. That's kind of the path. You know, they they start as youth pastors. Yeah. And I remember John said... Uh, these young girls need someone to talk to Mm -hmm. them. And I said, you know what? I'm not some package deal. 
just because you're the youth pastor doesn't make me the youth <laughs> pastor. And anyway, uh, I am afraid of getting up in front of people. Sadie, I lost an eye to cancer yeah. when I was five years old. And so I spent my whole life wow. hiding. So I thought, no, 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 I'm not going to get up. And John would say, well, you know what? You need to be ready. I want you just to greet the young girls. I want you just to encourage them. I said, you need to be ready. I'm going to walk out the back door. And so he'd be like, okay, just so he <laughs> would ask me to get up and I would just open my <laughs> mouth. And because God loves those girls so much, something, something of importance would come out. Wow. And I remember driving home and I said, don't you ever pull a stunt on that, like that on me again. I am not going to wow. do this. And John said, you know what, Lisa, you're not your own. You were bought with a price yeah. and you don't have the right to be comfortable when so many people are hurting. And that kind of was wow. the beginning of moving beyond myself. And gosh, I was, uh, I was in my late twenties wow. at that time. And now I'm 62 and I've wow. just watched the faithfulness of God. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so good. Like there are like 10 things that I want to unpack after you just said all that. And I love what he said. You don't get to be comfortable. While other people are hurting. I, I have a story that that's a little bit similar in the sense that I would have never wanted to do what I'm doing because I was so insecure about the very thing God was asking me to do. And I actually heard your story when you were talking about your eye and how um, there was a moment in school that you got out of speaking and you got out of like reading and writing because your eye yes. was kind of like your crutch. Well, and what's so ironic yes. is here you are and you're speaking and you're writing. You know, God loves to make you and I face what we fear. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But that's what increases your faith. Because like for me, so I used to be very insecure about speaking and actually reading because in school, I was so behind all the other kids in reading. I didn't find out till after high school that I'm dyslexic. So I didn't know what, what the problem was. I just thought I'm just a very slow reader. So I would go to my special class and I would read with the teacher one finger at a time. And so I never, ever would have thought that this would be my story. And when Duck Dynasty was happening, I was getting asked to speak places. I was terrible at it. And people think I'm trying to be sweet and humble. I'm like, no, no, no. I was literally so bad. The first no. place I spoke at, I was supposed to speak for 20 minutes. I spoke for five and the people asked for their money back. Like rough <laughs> beginning. Okay. <sighs> and so I would have never, that's crazy. Ever thought that I would do. Yeah. I would have never thought. And I remember whenever I started getting asked to speak places because of that, I would say, no, 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 I can't do it. And then Man, God just kept calling me into that space because kind of from the verse of you're the light of the world, not meant to be a lamp hidden under a stand, but to be on top of the stand and give light to the whole house. And that verse really convicted me that I'm not supposed to hide the light that God's put inside of me and that God is inside of me. And um, e and then through my relationship with God and really having a revelation of who he was and who he is in me and getting to know the Holy Spirit, I began to speak and it wasn't the old me speaking, it was the me alive in Christ. And so it is so cool to know that your story is similar in so many other people. And so for girls listening, I know many of you are in college. It's just really cool to hear that you were a girl who was kind of a heathen, listening to the highway of hill, thinking this is not going in the direction I want it to go, and hearing the <laughs> message that God loves you and it changing your life. Like, that's amazing. And I, um, I saw you wrote this quote. I got to read it. You said, if you're bored with the idea that, God's lo that God loves you, it's because you've heard it but haven't experienced it. Can you unpack that a little bit? Because some people are listening today and they've heard that God loves them, but it didn't change them like it changed you. What do you think it is to take it from just hearing it and knowing it to actually experiencing it? Well, for me, and I think God connects with each of us differently. For me, I remember this moment, Sadie, where I was doing, doing, doing like, okay, God has saved me. Now I'm going to prove my love to him by doing. And I remember there was this moment I was listening to worship music and I just sensed the Holy Spirit say, stop, just let me love you. Mm. And I thought, mm. what? He said, just, just receive. And literally I was a young mom. I, you know, John was traveling and speaking. I was in my kids' play area, the loft, with Legos strewn all over the floor. And I remember I just laid down and I said, 
I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to just let you love me. And there was just this moment where he just began to just like, I've, I literally sensed, and this is not something I say lightly or that it happens a lot, but I sense such an overwhelming presence of God's love that I literally felt like I couldn't move. And I just wept like wow. a baby. And too many people don't yeah. understand that who you and I are to God is more important than what we could ever do for him. So the relationship okay. that you, Sadie, has, and the, the relationship I have is daughter and father. He is my father. Mm. I am his daughter. Anything else I do, it's a role. So it, the the idea of yeah. wife, the idea of mother, the idea of speaker, author, all those things, those are all superfluous. Those are all things that maybe could be taken away from me. You know, I, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not right. thinking my husband's going to die or it's like that, but like, what if a day, so your identity is always attached to something you can never lose. And what I can never lose is no That's matter great. what life brings me, I'm always his and he is always mine. And so That's I think great. having a settledness in this idea that God is deeply personally attached and in love with you, that he's not detached that he's not on the sidelines of your life waiting for you to mess up. See, I had a dad that was that way. And so too many of us, if we've had mm. dads that have had broken lives, we think God the Father acts like the father we've known, but he is not a man that he yeah. would lie. So if God says he has loved us with an everlasting love and drawn us with his loving kindness, he means it. And he has set his heart to love you and mm. I into wholeness. And so I think sometimes you yeah. just have to receive that because I think people start their Christian walk and they're like, oh, of course he loves me at the beginning, but then I messed up. Right. Well, he, no, he yeah. still loves you and he's loving you into that place of who you really are. And this season, there is so much going on, especially with Honey Now being on the move and getting ready for Ella Sister Conference. So anytime we can save some time is a great thing. And Stamps.com actually saves us time and money, which is why we love it. It makes mailing and shipping easy and quick. So for those who love Etsy or eBay, anything like that, or you just have a small business, this is perfect for you. My team is always using Stamps.com to ship out packages, which saves time and money from the entire shipping process. So right from your computer, Computer, you have access to all the post offices and UPS shipping services that you need. Not only do you have easy access to these shipping services, but also you get discounts like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. So you don't need to have any special equipment or supplies. Stamps.com is so easy to use right from your laptop. Within minutes, you have official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send your mail. So stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code WOE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage in a digital scale with no long-term commitments or contracts. That is promo code WOE, W-H-O-A. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code WOE. That's so good. Gosh, I love that. I saw um, somewhere, I guess it was an interview that you said, there was a time of your life you had to change the way that you thought about how God was thinking about you. And I thought that was really, really good because I think so many people are walking around thinking God is thinking a certain thing about them or God is a certain way. But when you read the Bible, it's like does not align at all with actually who the character of God is. So talk to us about the importance of actually knowing the God of the Bible as the God who is God and not um, just thinking or, or maybe why we think of God as these certain ways that aren't really the character of who he really is. Well, I think one of them is what we've already touched on. We think that God is like us, you know, and God actually says, my mm. thoughts are so yeah. much higher than your thoughts and my ways are so much higher than your ways. And then you think, okay, how do I know your ways? How do I know your thoughts? Well, the word, when we read the scripture, we glimpse who God is and how he loves us. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do think that, the reason why I feel fiercely loved is because I do think, Sadie, a lot of people feel fiercely judged. 
they they feel like God is right. judging them, that God is rejecting them. And so I look at this moment where David has a revelation of how God is thinking about him. And in Psalm 139, we read, how precious are your thoughts about mm. me? Or another version says, towards me, oh God, they cannot be numbered. He said, I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Mm. And when I wake up, you are still with me. So there's three things I want to highlight. First of all, God's thoughts towards us, to you personally, whoever that is that is listening. Because I know a lot of people say, well, yeah, of course he loves Sadie. No, he loves you. His thoughts mm. towards you are thoughts of good. good. They're thoughts of treasure. And then they're innumerable. They cannot be numbered. We don't understand that because we have the finite mindset, but God is always thinking about his love for us. And then it says, and when I wake, you are still there with me. You know, I found out that mm. when a lot of things happened in 2020, it, it, a lot of people froze. And, you know, we talk about, we talk about fight or flight, but we have seen a lot of people freeze and they're afraid mm. to make a mistake. They're afraid to make a misstep. And I remember talking to this young girl. She would probably be about your age. She was newly married, just moved to a new city, new church. Everything was new. And she told me, she said, I'm just so afraid I might miss God. And I mm. was praying and I prayed with her. And then I was praying into it later. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Tell my children, I'm a really big target. Where can they look hmm. and not glimpse my goodness, my love, my kindness? If they lift their eyes to the stars, they see a God who put those stars in the heavens with his fingertips, a covenant keeping God. If you hmm. look at the mountains, you know there is a refuge that is higher than I. If you look at the ocean, which I think you were just at, you constantly hear that power and that resurgence that just never ends. If you right. feel the wind, you have a revelation of God's yeah. Holy Spirit. Everything in creation declares the wonder and the basically the enwrapping of God. He is all around us. And so I think we just need to all surrender and just take a step. Yeah. Because if we step in forward and we make a mistake, guess what? God will redirect us. You know, but he he says, That's my good. mercy and my grace, it follows you. So we need to be moving. And I think a lot of people, they're just afraid, yeah. so afraid of making a mistake, they don't move forward. And I think, you know, you're, yeah. you're looking at a one-year-old, you, are, are you going to tell her, hey, wait, I don't want you to try to walk because you're going to fall. I don't I don't want no wait. Hmm. That wasn't yeah. that isn't how I want to see you walk. I want to see you walk with confidence. You know, you're not going to do that. You're going wow. to celebrate every step she makes. And then I don't know That's if this right. has happened to you yet. But I after I had my first baby, I started having nightmares about people trying to hurt my baby. And I would wake yep. up. And have to calm myself down because I was attacking people in my dreams. Like, don't touch my baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this fierce nurture <laughs> came up. I was like, who was yeah. that person? But see, that is how God yes. feels about you and I. He says, like a mama bear robbed yes. of its cubs, like a lioness, I'll tear wow. your heart out. That is his protective love, his fierce love for his children. Wow. That is so good. That literally made me like, that makes me like have tears because this morning I was on my way to work and I, I've i had that, like those fears for my daughter a lot. And, you know, it's just, it's hard with the world that we live in, the things that go on and raising a one-year-old. And I was praying like such huge prayers for her on the way to work today, like with my worship music blasting. And I was just praying that just, just for like an angel of armies to surround her and just a fire of God to be around her and within her and that no evil would ever come her way because I have to take all that fear like straight to prayer and even just like thinking about the way that I pray for her like how much more does God actually protect her and how much more does God actually fiercely love her and watch over her life um, and I think that the hard thing is because 
it's when I leave to go to work and I wish I was there. You know, it's like my longing to be with her. But the amazing thing is just as you're saying, like God is watching over her as I go about my day because he, she is his child too. And then the revelation as you're talking of it being the same for me, like the, the same love that he has for her, for, for me, it's just wild. And, and it's just so cool that you're sitting here talking about the love of God. And like you said, like you can hear that all day long, but when you actually stop for a second and you think about the gravity that holds, it changes everything about your life. And man, it's just so good. Yeah. Speaking to me, um, I want to ask you, because you say this kind of thing a lot, and John says this too, in the way that y'all talk, you'll say, and then the Holy Spirit said this, and then the Holy Spirit said this. And for a lot of people, people always ask me, how do you hear the voice of God? How do you know it's the voice of God? And so I want to ask you, um, how do you know and quiet yourself to hear the voice of the Lord speaking and know whenever it's Him? Whether it is a family vacation, speaking somewhere, or getting ready for our conference coming up in August this summer, it fills up fast, and I'm so excited for everything going on, but I'm also considering how much this is going to take as far as energy comes, and immune system is going to have to be healthy to complete all these things. Athletic Greens does just that, helping us get the fuel and energy we need without making us crash later. The greatest thing about AG1 by Athletic Greens is that it contains everything that you need for a day in one drink. No more searching through multiple vitamins and trying to make sure that you have everything you need. Just one scoop contains 75 essential vitamins, which makes it the perfect everyday drink to get you through the day. It goes down really smooth, and Christian loves it so much that he's actually gotten his parents hooked on it too. It is packed with multi vitamins, minerals, probiotics, greens, and more. Plus, it's super lifestyle friendly. So whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 covers all of these things. It includes less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, and no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and still manages to taste great. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs when you make your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, just simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. I love that you asked me that. First thing I want to say to everybody is God wants to speak to us more than we want to hear from him. And so I feel mm -hmm. like we just don't, we just don't always expect it. So Sadie, I was in the same place. I, I would go to church and the minister would say, well, you know, God said to me, I was like, why are you talking to all these people? I don't feel like you're ever talking to me like that. Like, wait, what, what's right. going on here? And so I had just right. had my first son and I sat down with my journal and I said, God, you said in your word, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they'll hmm. not hear. I want to know your voice. I want to know the tone of your voice. I want to have a sensitivity to your voice. And I don't feel like I have that. You also said that mm. if I sought, I would find. And I, you know, and I, I want you to talk to me more than anything else. Now, brand new mother, breastfeeding mother, six month old baby. I said, I will give you my most precious thing. I will even let you wake me up if you will speak to me, <laughs> but just don't be silent. And so <laughs> Sadie, I remember it was like that next night I woke up and it was like one, one, you know, like one eleven, And I thought, why am I waking up? And I just went back to sleep. Then wow. the next night, one eleven, I thought, what is going wow. on? Why am I waking up at one <laughs> eleven? <clears throat> and then the third night I finally went, wait a minute. I told God he could wake me up. So I, I wow. like slipped out of my bed. I turned on the little overhead light and I sat with a journal like this, like, okay, talk to me. And I don't know. <laughs> like, I was like, and it was just this beautiful, he, he talked to me. Actually, I had just had a really rough labor with my first baby. And he just wow. said, I'm going to bring you into a, a you're going to have another child. And this time the birth is going to be joyous and easy. And to be honest with you, I kind of wrote back like, well, it wasn't joyous or easy last time, uh, you know, and I was, I was yeah, really believing yeah. God for that. And I felt really disappointed and I had a really hard recovery. And he said, when it gets too hard, let me carry you. And I was like, I feel like you, yeah. I mean, and this was just as fast as I could write it. I said, I feel like you didn't carry me last time. I don't know how hmm. to let you carry me. I was just really gut, you know, gut level honest with God. 
and I wrote it all out. And I just remember him telling me, I need you to surrender. I need you to surrender mm-hmm. control. And he said, you think that you can control things, but you're not in control. He said, it's fear. You need to start letting go of some stuff. And I said, I don't, I don't know how to let go. You know, I, I mean, like just super honest. Yeah. And, and then we moved Sadie and that journal got lost, got packed away. I started another journal and then I had my second son. Do you know, I had Austin 27 minutes after I got to the hospital. No, I had actually forgot. I had actually forgot that God had told me I was going to have a quick next baby. Totally forgot it. Wow. And I found the journal and I opened it up and I wept like a baby, not because I had a child quickly, but because I knew that I knew the voice. And then this is the other thing. The voice of God will never contradict the scriptures. It will always come in alignment with the scriptures. And, you know, I I do believe that, you know, we can involve other people in our lives. Like I can... I can, you know, feel like sensing something and go to my husband and say, I just, I'm just really feeling something about this situation. And I just want to share this with you. And and he can be like, yeah, I feel that. So we can talk to each other and there can be a confirmation, but just like you, before you had your daughter, when you heard another baby cry, it was a baby cry. But when you hear your daughter Mm -hmm. cry, even if there's another baby crying, You not only know which one is your daughter crying, you know if she's scared or tired or hungry or hurting. And so it's it's like that distinguishing. And right now, I really do feel that we all need to develop the ability to hear the voice of God. And and I think journaling Mm -hmm. is a really great way to do it. And so I've always just written things down, impressions that I felt. And then just captured them. And what happens often for us, and I'm sure you've seen it this way, it's two years later when you realize, oh, that that was God. That's right. That was, you know, that was God. At the time I was hoping it was God. That was God. (laughs) And you just develop a, a listening, hearing ear. Wow. That's so good. I am going to be honest. I don't know that I've ever felt, I've done a hundred plus podcasts. Uh, I don't know that I've ever felt like one was more for me. Like, it's crazy. As you're Aww. like, everything you're saying, I'm like, I feel like I'm like, it's like crazy. Like, I don't even, I, I don't even get emotional on these podcasts, but it's like all these questions like that you're answering that I actually needed to hear. Um, because I actually had like a really hard first labor and, um, yeah. And like, I had no idea this, about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Like I had a really hard first labor and I'm like learning to, um, I guess like work past that. Cause I was really believing for that to not go that direction. Um, and it went a completely different direction. And now, you know, getting to the point where, you know, you're praying for another kid, but you're dealing with the fears of what happened and learning to trust God and learn to trust his voice. And even just the, um, overprotecting mama heart in me that I've been dealing with the fears and stuff. So everything you're saying is like, if it's not for anyone else, I'm thankful. (laughs) I know this is going to be for (laughs) thousands of other people, but I'm just thankful too, for, for what you're speaking over my life. Um, so I'm going to ask you personal questions because this, but I think this is for everybody too. Do you ever, and maybe it's the difference of like knowing your baby's voice, but do you ever feel like, how do you discern between like maybe what is fear speaking and what's the Lord speaking? Because sometimes I feel like I'm like, okay, well, is that my fear that's prompting that thought or is that the Lord prompting this? Does that make sense? Yes. Because I feel like that sometimes is hard for me to discern. Yeah, I think fear always comes with confusion. Fear yeah, never brings hope with it. And it never usually brings a strategy. It only brings a reaction. Whereas I feel yeah, like good. God's leading gives you a pathway. And so, you that's know, I, I'm just going to tell you, Sadie, I was so fearful. So I have my second son. He's this beautiful, strong, riding a bike without training wheels at two years old. I'm, I'm not, I'm not wow. talking two and a half. I'm talking like two and one month. He <laughs> That's awesome. just, and then all of a sudden 
I started hearing him say out loud fears that were in my head. And I thought, why is he saying that? Why, wow. why is he saying, I can't do that? I can't be that. I was like, Austin, who told you that? No. And so wow. I really brought it to prayer. And I was like, God, I don't want my son to be fearful. Yeah. And I had such a sense that the Holy Spirit challenged me. He said, Lisa, your children are either going to inherit my promises or your fears. And he wow. said, you need to face off with some of your fears to position mm. them well. And so I started to cry out, uh, Sadie, I started mm. saying, God, why am I so fearful? Why am I so fearful? Why am I so fearful? And he said, you're asking the wrong thing. You're mm. not, the why is not, that's not where you need to go. Cause he said, you can spend your whole life figuring out why you're messed up and you will still be messed up once you know why he said, mm, it's wow. about knowing the truth that sets you free. Yep. He said, you've got That's to right. know my word and the truth more than you've known your fears and the lies. And so all of a sudden one day, and it was so crazy one, you know, going back to the, I think one day I was making my bed and a friend called me and she asked me a question. I said, oh, well, I'm not very good at tennis because I only have one eye. So it's hilarious. And she was like, wait a minute. What do you mean you only have one eye? And I said, oh, well, I lost an eye to cancer when I was five. And Sadie, in that moment, all of the sudden, I remembered everything. I remembered everything that had mm. been blocked out since I had been five years of age. But God brought it wow. to me when I was strong enough to heal. And I know that sounds crazy, wow. but we don't want to search uh, the dark pathways of our life by our own understanding. We need to search them by the light of God's word. And God like, will That's bring right. us to this place where I'm ready for that to be healed. And um, it was just this beautiful thing. because, the, And this was the crazy thing. If you had come to me it, at that point in my in that season of my life, young mother, if you had come to me and said, you know, I'm going through something in my marriage, or you know, I'm really afraid someone's going to kidnap my kid, which was a big fear for me with all the mail, you know, the milk boxes and kids, I yep. would have grabbed yep. hands with you and I would have prayed, I would have believed for you because I believed that God was good for Sadie, but I questioned mm -hmm. whether He was good for me. Because when yeah. you have fear, usually behind it is a, a heart of unbelief because you've known disappointment. And so mm -hmm. I had to deal with a heart condition. And um, the fear was from some other stuff. And, you know, God will actually set us free. And I, I, I am a big believer that the opposite of fear is not faith because you can have faith in your fears. The children of Israel, right. they were like, you brought us out here to kill us. And God was like, okay, <laughs> there you go. But, <laughs> but I believe the opposite of fear is love because perfected yeah. love casts out all fear. And we know that the right. greatest fear that any human will ever face is the fear of death. And yet Jesus conquered that fear for us. It says, no greater right. love does a man have than to lay down his life for his friends. And so oh, man, I so find good. that as we receive God's love, we move into a place of more fearlessness. You know, I have one yeah. regret That's in good. my marriage, just one regret. I wish I would have loved my husband more fearlessly from the very beginning. Wow. I was wow. measured. I held back. I didn't want him to make mistakes. I didn't want us to make mistakes. We didn't take some risks that we could have take, taken. And I wish I would have been all in and given him my whole heart that first eight years. I have since then. But mm. it was sad that we lost those times. And I tell every young couple, give yourself permission to make mistakes. It's just a learning you know, it's just a wow. chance That's to so good. learn things together. So That's so good. Man, this is so good. And I, I do feel like, back to what you were talking about earlier, there is this crippling in the church, and especially I know uh, – 
for our generation in this age group, it's like you're so scared yeah. to make the wrong move that you don't make any move. Um, you're sc- so scared to do the wrong thing that you don't love fully. You don't be, you're not your full self. You're not going for it, taking the risk. And that's resulting in um, not having really fruitful, amazing free relationships. It's resulting in not going and doing the things, trying the things, getting back up after you fall, failing and learning from it and all these different things. And I have a mom who's kind of taught us to to go and my mom uses the example that you use too about, you know, you got to let your kid fall so that they learn to walk. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. And so what you're speaking, I know to be so, so true. And, um, just for everyone out there listening, especially in the college age group, every time I go to college campus, I'll ask people, what do you see your friends struggling with? And everyone always says perfectionism. And I just pray that some of the stuff that Lisa's saying would just break that perfection off of you, that you would know that you are loved freely by God. Not, I love how you said at the beginning, despite of you, you are loved by God and he's got your back. If you fall, he's got your back. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is you talk about in your devotional seeking the light and how some people are scared of seeking the light because of what the light does and exposing us. And it would seem funny because all of us in reality would be like, oh, yeah, we're seeking light. Like we want to be the light. We're the light of the world. But then we're also like fearful for to actually let light shine on us. And it seems like that was kind of a moment for you where you let light shine on or God even let the light shine on, you know, all the way back for you to see some things that you weren't strong enough to handle at the time when you were younger, but you were ready. How do we let God into those spaces? Even like today, like I'm sitting here and I'm like crying and I don't do that (laughs) often because I'm like just letting God speak to me through you. I'm like receiving, I'm not going to wait and and think about it later. Like this is not affecting me. Uh, I want to be honest because God's doing something in me that I've been asking him in my private prayers in a public space. And how crazy is that? But how do you begin to let God do that? Is it, is it laying down pride? Is it other things? Is it a mix of all? But how do you let God's light shine on you and not fear the exposure that the light's going to bring? Yes. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you, Sadie, the fact that you're crying is such a honor for me. Because it means that I believe tears water when seeds are sown. And mm-hmm. so that open that opening of your spirit and, and I'm hoping that that's how other people feel. So I'll tell I'll tell you how I started it. I um <laughs> this is embarrassing. I was <laughs> a associate pastor's wife. I was a youth pastor's <laughs> wife. I thought perhaps there might be two things wrong with me. Two things. And so I took a moment and I was like, God, I just want you to come into my life and I want you to excavate it. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, I was like, wait, I didn't mean excavate. I meant to say accessorize. I want you to landscape my life. Wait, why are you digging up all these terrible things? And I was like, wait, I'm so sorry. That was a bad word word choice. Yeah, it was a bad word choice. And this is just in my imagination. I feel like uh, God was like, did y'all hear that? She said, excavate, (laughs) just go for it. And what I have found, I don't like this. I have found it usually gets worse before it gets better. Because just like every other month, I might get mad at my husband. Then it was every month. Then it was every two weeks. Then it was throwing plates at him. <laughs> and then I was like, what's, what's just happened to my life? And, and I was like, I, God's trying to deal with something. And I had made excuses for anger for a really long time. And I have learned that what I justify, I buy. When I use excuses and blame, I'm actually saying I have to be this way because of what was done to me. But God is always saying to you and I, it's not what was done to you. It's what was done for you. And we want to call people higher. So anytime you ask God to excavate your life, it's, it's to remove barriers. It's, it's going to be like a pruning process, which may make you feel a little stripped and naked, but it will bring you to a greater place of fruitfulness. 
That's so good. That's so good. My gosh. Well, I could truly talk to you all day. I'm so grateful for this conversation. I have your devotional book right here. It is so beautiful for all the girls out there who love this conversation. Go get this book, Fiercely Love. You're going to be so blessed by the devotionals in it. And I hope that you're so blessed by this conversation. I know I certainly was. See, that's pretty obvious. I hope that you are too. And Lisa, thank you for just taking time to sit with us, speak into our lives, and thank you for being someone that we can all look up to from afar and learn from. Uh, Truly, your family and the way that y'all live your life is a huge inspiration for how Christian and I want to live ours and raise our family. And we're just so grateful for you guys. Well, you'll have to come for a plastic dinner the next time you're in the Nashville area. 